So it started in 2004. Yes. See the bamboo sticks over there. Where? The Indonesian archipelago consists of about 17,500 islands, about 6,000 of which are inhabited, and has a coastline of 81,000 kilometers, home to 240 million people. It is the fourth largest nation in the world. The region is the global center of marine biodiversity with highly productive ecosystems such as coral reefs, mangroves and seagrass meadows. These ecosystems stabilize the coastlines, are significant repositories of genetic information and play a vital role in the livelihoods of coastal people. However, Recent developments have brought Indonesian reefs to the brink of extinction. Over 60% of the Indonesian population lives in the coastal zone. They call their land Tana Air Kita, which means our land and water. In the so-called coral triangle between Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Papua and North Australia, more than 75% of all known coral species are found. To the northeast, the Pacific Ocean is warmer and has a higher water level than the Indian Ocean in the southwest. As a result, the so-called Indonesian through-flow rushes through the archipelago, bringing nutrients into the region. That is why it is an ideal, fertile place for corals, fish and turtles. In the Spermandi archipelago in southern Sulawesi, everyday life is entangled in an international web of market forces, which has in turn created a dangerous relationship with the local environment. Years of bombing and cyanide fishing have critically depleted fish stocks and decimated coral reefs. To supplement their incomes, local people have become the first link in the lucrative global trade chain for rare and endangered species. Today, the coastal ecosystems are under enormous pressure due to rapid social and economic changes and are threatened by overuse and environmental degradation. Most islanders make the living from the sea. They fish because land is scarce, while access to the fishery is open to everyone. Overfishing and water pollution drive them further and further out to sea to catch at least a minimum amount of fish. Not only edible fish is targeted. Sea cucumbers have been exploited for many years for the Chinese market and ornamental fish are exported for Western and Asian aquaria. Bombs and cyanide are often used to fish more and faster to satisfy an increasing demand for seafood on international markets. When I was young, we caught big fish. We just used a hook and line to catch them. Now, the fish are small. Hmm. 
I was looking for fish and then I saw the fish swarm so I prepared a bomb. But the bomb exploded too early. It all happened in the blink of an eye. A dominant feature of these islands is the Pungawa Sawi, or patron client system. The relatively wealthy Pungawas lend boats and money to the Sawis who go fishing. In exchange, the Sawi have to sell all their catch to their Pungawa at a lower price than they might get elsewhere. Pungawas and Sawis are bound together by a web of debt and mutual obligations. Thus, extremely poor fishers rank lowest in an exploitative global network of fishermen, traders and markets with serious effects on the reefs and their own lives. The daily needs of local people are seldom effectively addressed in environmental policy. Together, scientists from Germany and Indonesia started a project to study the motives of fishermen who use techniques that threaten the very basis of their existence. The results will help in the quest for solutions. Problems in our coastal study areas are a reduction in fish population, pollution, coral degradation and, not least of all, a poor and growing population. Our research aims to examine how human nature interactions create these problems. Our approach is interdisciplinary between the natural and social sciences. It is also participatory. We want to include the priorities of people who live with the ecosystems that are under threat. We found innovative potential in mariculture to support people's livelihoods, coastal erosion control and also in renewable energy. We hope to combine these knowledge systems in support of a better future for the people in these coastal environments and for the ecosystems they depend on. Social and natural scientists embark to a number of islands in the Spermandia archipelago, also known as the Sankarang Islands. They work together in the Indonesian-German SPICE program. The aim of this group of researchers from both countries is to analyze coastal social ecological change in Indonesia. For nine days, they will discuss with island people to understand local thinking about the reef environment. The SPICE researchers focus on fishing practices, environmental degradation and local livelihoods. The ultimate question is how to ensure a sustainable future for coastal ecosystems and the people who depend on them. Well, um, part of this trip, for first, yeah, we are we, trying to develop a new method for social ecological system research. And we expect that um, we have several objectives for this, like um, to see how the the life, the livelihood of fishermen dynamically adapt to the changing seasons. Jadi yang kita harapkan bahwa kita dapat memberikan masukan yang lebih baik kepada masyarakat nelayan. I hope we can give inputs to the fishermen and that the people will accept us so that we can talk about practices that could make their lives better. Apa yang kita berikan sebagai bentuk pertukaran antara ilmu dan praktis dalam masyarakat sehingga itu membuat mereka bisa hidup lebih baik. Many of the islands are tiny. Just enough space for a few houses. Fuel is expensive and people collect driftwood from the shore for cooking. Electricity is available only for a few hours each day. Everything the inhabitants need must be brought in from the mainland by boat. To protect the islands from erosion, people build wave breakers. Corals are used as a substitute for expensive stones. 
This reinforces erosion, a vicious circle. The conviction that everything which happens is God-given destiny is ever-present. Islands with freshwater supply may support small-scale gardening and the keeping of some domestic animals. Islanders live in complete dependence of the sea, the tides and the weather. Climate change is endangering this fragile relationship. The scientists arrive on Saugi Island. In group discussions, they will talk to villagers from various sections of local society to allow a wide range of the village population to express the views. Influential, less influential and young people meet in their own groups. To assess gender differences, separate focus groups are formed for men and women. For the so-called ice-breaking, everyone meets in a public place, in this case the school. Afterwards, groups meet several times for discussions. Participatory research methods combine natural and social science with local knowledge. The scientists come to ask about the situation of each island and its marine environment. Questions are, what are the fishing methods? Which are the key species targeted by the islanders? Are there significant changes of the sea and the weather? How did these changes affect people's livelihoods? How do people cope with all this? Visual outputs are prepared together with the villagers. The researchers also walk around the island and ask about the things they see. Sometimes they discover interesting things that the islanders didn't think to be important enough to mention, such as this locally initiated planting of mangrove trees to prevent erosion. It was useful for me. Discussion is sharing. I can understand things that I didn't know before, like the history of the island. You don't know this island or our life here. We can give you information about it. While drawing a timeline for the island, the participants exchange views about how the destruction of the reefs began and at which stage it is today. It becomes clear that many inhabitants acknowledge that present practices, if unchanged, will result in the complete degradation of the reefs. Solutions to stop this trend are urgently needed. The analysis of social ecological systems aims to make clear how to increase the resilience of the reef and of people's ways of living and earning a living. By examining ecological aspects, such as coral bleaching, composition of the reef community, algal growth and the spread of animal larvae, biologists investigate the status and vulnerability of the reefs. Since 1990, hard coral cover in the area has decreased by about 5%. Causes are the use of cyanide and explosives for fishing, as well as pollution of the environment. A coral reef um, is a diverse assemblage of different animals or different groups of animals that um, in our case occur in tropical waters and are specialized to a very narrow uh, range of environmental conditions. Um, meaning that they need a temperature of between say 20 and 30 degrees per year, they need sufficient sunlight um, and they occur in shallow tropical waters and um, they're comprised of 
uh, for the most part corals, but also um, a range of other organisms like sponges, algae are also a part of it, um, crustaceans, fishes, and so on. But the important thing is that the algae, uh, that the corals that constitute a coral reef are building the structures as they go. So it's a living entity that's growing over the years and is forming a barrier, a natural barrier around these islands that we see here. Yeah, so in short, I hope that people um, will be able to find a balance between people's needs and nature's needs so they can continue to live on these islands as they've been doing for centuries and they will be able to do so for the future. Alternatives that are environmentally friendly and that also provide income for those who now depend on bomb or cyanide fishing are needed. Here are some ideas. Sea cucumbers can be cultured in tanks. Seahorses clean the skin of the sea cucumbers. Consumers for both animals are mainly from China. This project is being developed in collaboration between scientists, business people and local fisherfolk. Fish mariculture is another alternative. Cages at sea are not only a storage place for keeping captured fish, but could also be used for breeding. Work that examines such options is needed in Spermandi. If the marine environment is to be saved, the fish hunters of today will have to become the fish farmers of tomorrow. Cultivation of algae may provide a new income for local women. Furthermore, small-scale tests are planned to produce biofuel from algae. This could be used for cooking and for producing electricity, which is still scarce on the islands. On these iron tables, corals are cultivated. One aim is to restore some of the damaged coral reefs. If this proves successful, erosion of the islands would be reduced. Another initiative to protect the islands from erosion is the planting of mangrove trees. Mangroves can grow in saline water. The roots will stabilize the soil and prevent it from being washed away by the sea. This fake crab may look funny, but it is an efficient lure for octopus. The local people proudly present their innovative bait to the scientists. With its hooks, it holds the octopus, which is trying to catch the fake crab. It yields excellent results. Although the ecological effects of this latest invention are not yet examined, it is certainly more sustainable than bombs or cyanide. Maybe you can even use the biomass, for example, the organic waste, and then mix with the, if they have a wild algae, for example, or other biomass, and then they can, it, can, it can be also used as a biogas. And then the biogas can produce either a gas for cooking, so they don't need to use the wood, for example, or they don't need to buy an LPG, and they can use this biogas. Or it can be converted to the electricity as they need it. Mm. Social ecological research opens wide opportunities for the population in their relation to nature. The project shown here is one of only a few to consider the everyday realities of local people. The new knowledge created should help islanders and policymakers to make decisions that are better for nature and society. It has a good chance to help set the course for a better future.